In this second video on the Schwarzschild metric, the form of the non-zero affine connections is determined and then used to find the zero-zero component of the Ricci tensor. This component is shown to be an expression using the first two elements along the diagonal of the Schwarzschild metric. Alright, so in the previous video we found the form of the line element for the Schwarzschild metric to be this object here. Using various symmetry arguments, we're able to produce this metric, which is diagonal, this line interval, with whose metric terms are diagonal, is what I should say. So the metric takes this form here, right, and we found, using arguments of the weak field, general relativity in the weak field, that this first component was here, is this object here, and we still need to find this second component here, this B term. Now this metric describes the space-time outside the mass below, so we're interested in a metric that describes everything outside this spherical distribution of mass. Everything outside, not inside the mass. Alright, to find the form of B as a function of R, we need to solve the Einstein field equation in the region outside the spherical mass. Now the field equation is this, it takes this form here. And in the region outside the mass, the energy and momentum tensor T mu, uh, mu nu is zero. Outside the spherical distribution of mass, there's no matter or energy, and so T is zero in this region. And that gives us this equation here, which we can rewrite in this form here, using the metric to act on the scalar here to produce the tensor, Ricci tensor, and working that through, we end up with the Ricci tensor is equal to zero in this region. So the Ricci tensor is zero outside the spherical distribution of mass. All right, now the Ricci tensor is a contraction of the Riemann tensor, and the Riemann tensor is this form here. All right, contracting on the first and third indices, the delta there, first index and third index here, contracting on those, delta delta, gives us this object here. And the affine connection or Christoffel symbol of the second kind is given by this object here. All right, uh, we'll need the, along the way we'll need the inverse metric, so that's this object here. Given a diagonal metric is just a reciprocal of each of the uh, terms along the diagonal from the original metric. Now we need to search through all 64 possibilities that the Christoffel symbols, gamma, alpha, mu, mu, can take for this problem. There's uh, it's these three indices here, each can take four values, 0, 1, 2, or 3. And there's 4 by 4 is 16 by 4 gives us 64. Starting with the zero zero component, so we need a sensible way now to search through all the possibilities. There's 64 of them. So let's start with zero zero zero. All the indices zero. And that's this object here, G zero zero. Now, this is the derivative of the, the zero zero term here with respect to the time component, which we've already seen in this case. The metric for a stationary space time requires that the derivative of the metric terms with respect to time is zero. And so all of these go to zero and drop out. Alright, let's now take the top index here and call it I. And we'll work our way through here, searching through here. We'll find that there is really only one possibility that works out to be. Um, and that's this object here. Now, if I is 1, then sigma must be 1. And we get this object here, which is... D A D R, uh, sorry, 1 on B, negative 1 on 2B times, and the 0, 0 term differentiated with respect to X1, which was the R coordinate, so D A D R, and that gives us gamma 1, 0, 0, I equals 1 only. So for I equals 1 only, uh, I being the spatial index, for I equals 1 only, we have only one component. Alright, let's try varying one of the zeros down here. Gamma zero zero i, and substituting that through. Now, if zero here, given it's a diagonal metric and the inverse metric g uh, superscript zero sigma is a diagonal, the only term once that's zero, the sigma must be zero as well. And so, substituting through, we get this object here. Um, these are off diagonal terms, they're zero. Same with this one. And we're just left with this middle term here. Working through that. Right, we find the only one, G00, is a function of R only. So it can only be differentiated with respect to R, X1. And 
not with respect to the others, because g0 is only a function of r, as we found. And so we get 1 on 2a times dA dr, it's gamma 0, 0, uh, uh, 1. So again, i equals 1 only, so for, for this component. g0, 0, if you remember, was the first term, it was a of r, uh, and differentiate with respect to r. Uh, a was a function of r only, so no, none of the other derivatives apply. So we can only have i equals 1 only. Now, let's try varying uh, the two lower indices, i, j, i and j being Latin indices, so they're spatial, we're talking about spatial. Uh, it also works for zero, obviously, but we would verify that case. So if we substitute in here, zero up here, okay. So sigma, by the same token, must also be zero, which we'll get down here. Substituting all that through, we get these objects here, j and zero, i and uh, zero and i. Uh, and what will happen is we'll find that because we these are di uh, off diagonal terms, cross terms, they we know they don't exist in the metric. And also here, differentiating respect to time, the metric is uh, of any of the metric terms is zero, so that goes to zero. So all of these are zero. Keep searching. Let's make them all i, whatever i is, and being spatial, of course. And working through that, if that's i, then we'll find out sigma here must also be i. Substitute that in. Do this step by step so that you cover all possibilities and work systematically with all these types of problems. Otherwise, you could lose terms and cause confusion. Over here, now, um, this and this will cancel out. Just left with this object here times the inverse metric ii component. When we work through that, again, the only thing that really works when we try all the different combinations, like you put 2, 2, and 2 there, um, 2, 2 was the r squared term, and dx2 was the theta term, so the only term that works, that survives, to give you a, a derivative, is g11 with respect to x1, which is the r coordinate, and so we get 1 on 2b db dr, is that object there, i equals 1 only. All right, let's keep going. Let's fix the top index to be i, the upper index to be i, and leave mu mu to be anything at the bottom. And as we search through all the possibilities again, search through it carefully. If this top one's 1, then sigma must be 1 as well. As you would substitute through that. When you work your way through, you'll end up with the only viable term was a half g superscript 1 1, contravariant 1 1, times this object here. When you do that, 1 on 2b ddr of r squared, so you get minus r on b. So the only term that survives is gamma 1, 2, 2. And then we keep going gamma 1, mu, nu, this object here. Uh, we've got 1 up the top there, so sigma must be 1 as well. As we search through, here's possibilities we could have. And we end up with this object here. Okay, so the gamma 1, 3, 3 term survives, and it's this object here. Alright, let's try 2 up the top, mu mu, searching through it. Uh, if this is 2, then sigma also must be 2 down here, substitute through, and the only object that survives is this one. Uh, bottom right hand corner of the metric, and that is r squared sine squared theta, that's g3, 3. And we differentiate x2 as theta, so we can perform that differentiation. It doesn't go to zero in, in this object here. So gamma 2, 3, 3 survives. Keep going. Gamma 2, mu 1. Search through. Sigma must be 2 as well. Substitute that in. Search your way through. The only thing that survives is this term. Evaluating it gives you 1 on r. So gamma 2, 2, 1 survives. Let's try 3 up the top here, mu 1. Search it through that. If this is a 3, then sum of sigma b. So we go down here. Is a 3, substitute through. All right. Again, the only term that survives is this one here, which we can evaluate. G superscript 3, 3, or contravariant 3, 3 in both the indices is 1 over 2 r squared sine squared theta, with a half that bump it is. And then G3, 3 is that object there, and we differentiate with respect to x1, which is the r, so what survives is 1 over r, so gamma 3, 3, 1 survives. All right, gamma 3, mu 2. Substitute through, sigma must be 3 as well. Here we go. Again, anything that survives is this. And this is a meaningful derivative, it doesn't go to 0, so we end up with cos theta on sine theta is gamma 3, 3, 2. And 
that concludes the search. And then just to reiterate what we found, here's the summary of what we found. These ones, this one, that one, one, two, two, one, three, three, two, three, three, two, two, one, three, three, one, three, three, two, and these two are zero. Zero, 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 and gamma zero, ij is zero as well. All right, let's keep going. All right, now in the region outside the mass, we've already seen that the Ricci tensor is equal to zero, and that means that each of its components is equal to zero. There's only four of those components because, if you remember from the metric, there are only four elements that were non-zero, and they were all of the diagonal terms. So we only have four to set equal to zero, and the Ricci tensor has this form here, just to remind you all, that one, the zero, zero component, let's begin. Example, the zero, 0 component substituting in for mu and gamma gives us this object here. Now we need to very systematically go through this carefully because there are two indices that must be summed over, the delta and the lambdas. So go very carefully and systematically through this. So R0,0, zero, zero, let's expand on delta. So the delta is from the previous page, we're going to substitute in 0, 0. Zero there, and we'll leave the lambdas for the moment untouched. So just summing through with the deltas, placing the deltas, so these are the zeros on this row, ones on this one, twos on this one, threes on this one. We'll just have a look back here. This term here is identical to this term here, except there's a minus, so they cancel out. The derivative of these, because the gamma is made up of the metric terms, combinations of the metric terms, then the derivative of that will go to zero as well. They disappear because there's no the metric is not a function of time, so differentiating expected time causes that to disappear. Over here, next line, what we will keep on the next line is that one. That'll become this term down here. Right, this one differentiating expected time will disappear because there's no time in the metric. And we will keep some of these. That one will keep. Uh, that one will keep. Uh, next line down uh, in the metric there, x2, that's going to disappear. This time component business here will disappear. Differentiate with respect to time. x0 is the time component, so differentiate will disappear. We've seen that this gamma 200, zero, zero, by the way, was 0, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, this gamma 300 zero, zero, was 0, that doesn't exist. Um, and likewise, this one doesn't exist. And so that they all drop out. And so quite a few of these things have dropped out. Uh, and we're left with just these bits here. So these differential parts, all of it dropped out except for that one term there. Okay, we come down here. And our next step now, on the next page, we'll expand out the lambdas. So go carefully step by step with this. All right, expanding out the lambdas, we're going to have 0, 0, 1, 1. 2, 2, 3, 3, and then the same down here as well. Expand all of these out. Some will be plus, some will be minus. Just follow carefully and make sure you include all of them step by step. I've put, I've put, I've laid them out as carefully as I can on the page in front of you. Alright, now some of these, using what we found earlier, will drop out and disappear. And those ones that do, I've marked. So for instance, we keep the first term obviously here, that's down here. And this one here, gamma 0, 0, 0, that is 0. So this term vanishes, and that's why there's a 0 here. All right. Now this gamma 1, 1 and gamma 1, 0, 0 didn't disappear. That gave us this and this. But this very next one, gamma 1, 1, 2 and gamma 2, 0, 0, both of which disappeared. So that gives us this 0 here. And working systematically carefully through it, from all the gammas we found earlier, from all the affine connection or Christoffel symbols we found earlier, match them up and find which ones you keep and which ones disappear. Going all the way through there, you can see which of those disappear because they're, they're marked as zeros. And the only things that survive are the, this one, this one, that one, that one, that one. All right, so first and third, first and third, and then zero, zero, and then that one survived, and so on. All right, so go carefully. All right. Let's collect the surviving terms, get rid of zero, so we have this, 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 and this. All right, now, 
this is the derivative with respect to r of this object here, which is the product. So we need the product rule, or Leibniz rule here. And when we differentiate that out, without putting all the steps in it, we'll end up with a double dash. Now each dash is the derivative with respect to r. And so this is the ABR, and then we differentiate again, there's a double dash. And that's over b here. Factorise out the common factor of negative half, that goes out. Um, and then we have this object here. Right, that comes from the product rule. And then over here we have collecting 1 over b to give 1 over b squared and the two twos give me a quarter. The minus there, a dash, b dash. a dash is the ADR, b dash is the BDR. Same over here, 1 over 4ab, the twos, and the a and the b, 4ab and 1 over. And then this is a dash squared. It's two of them multiplied together. And this one over here, 1 over r, a dash on B. Okay, next line down, let's play out the first bit here. Now, in this second bit here, that's just this, but with a factor of 2 on top, and so this becomes a factor of 4. And I did that to make a common denominator, 4B squared, common denominator with this one, 4B squared, uh, and the 4 here. Okay, so we do that. Now we notice that this, 2A dash B dash on 4B squared minus A dash B dash on 4B squared, just gives us one of them, there it is. Then this last term here, minus that. Okay, next thing we do is we keep the first term and the fourth term and then just factorise this middle bit, middle part of the expression, a dash on 4b outside of this object here. So the zero, zero component is this object here. Alright, so the four components are, zero, zero is this one here, and if you repeat the same procedure you've just seen on the last few slides, you'll get r11. R22, and then you find that R33 is just a factor of R22 with a factor of sine squared theta. So in the next video, we'll use the information obtained so far to find the final form of A of R and B of R. All right. And just remember, these components that reach your tensor just follow the same procedure as we just did for this one.